Tell you what an honor it is to uh, to be here for Helen's funeral. Uh, I know that it's a solemn occasion, of course, for us. However, uh, I got to know Helen and Ralph uh, quite well when uh, uh, family lived next door at Carla's house, and uh, lots of times um, we uh, were able to spend a little bit of time with them and uh, just to get to know them a little bit better. So it's uh, very fitting that I get an opportunity to do this. Um, I wanted to read from you, first of all, from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, um, because this has been quite a discussion that's been going on in our society today, especially in the year 2020. Uh, it's been quite an interesting year, needless to say. Um, the uh, purpose for uh, the Apostle Paul writing this from 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 4 was simply because of the fact that uh, there were many people in Thessalonica that were very concerned about their loved ones who had already passed. And when the Lord, uh, you know, would uh, come down and, and uh, call his uh, uh, children home, uh, a lot of times they were concerned about the fact of whether or not their loved ones would be left behind in the grave. And so the Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about people who have died so that you won't mourn like others who don't have any hope. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose, we, or so we also believe that God will bring with him those who have died in Christ. What we are saying is a message from the Lord. We who are alive and still around at the Lord's coming definitely won't go ahead of those who have died. This is because the Lord himself will come down from heaven with the signal of a shout of, a, of the head angel or the archangel and a blast of God's trumpet. First, those who are dead in Christ will rise. Then we who are alive and still around will be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That way we will always be with the Lord, so encourage each other with these words. So the good news is that those who have died as believers in Jesus Christ will not prevent those of us uh, when it comes to the resurrection. And any time that I see the words in an obituary where it says, you know, that uh, he or she went home to be with their Lord and Savior, I do have to smile because, you know, it tells us that at some point in that person's life, a profession about their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ has been made. And at this time, I would like to say an opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for having had the privilege to know someone like Ellen in our lives. She had over 80 years to make an impact on the lives of many people, and as we can see here today, she indeed did that. And we are grateful for the way that she shared her love and her wisdom with so many of her family members and friends. Uh, she definitely made a huge impact upon our lives, and of course, we know that today is a day that we look back and celebrate those different accomplishments that she has done in her life, knowing how much they have touched the lives of those who knew her best. Now, please be with us as we go throughout this memorialized service 
And we thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Allow me to share with you a uh, brief poem, and I did change the pronouns in this one just to match uh, the type of person, of course, that uh, Ellen uh, would fit. Not how did she die, but how did she live? Not what did she gain, but what did she give? These are the units to measure the worth of a woman as a woman, regardless of birth. Not what was her church, nor what was her creed, but had she befriended those really in need? Was she ever ready with a word of good cheer to bring back a smile to banish a tear? Not what did the sketch in the newspaper did say, but how many were sorry when she had passed away? Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and very dear. As I share the following scriptures, I want you to think about the characteristics about love, and I want you to really put Ellen's face right in the midst of what I'm going to be reading here from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Beginning in verse 1, it says, What if I could speak all languages of humans and of angels? If I did not love others, I would be nothing more than a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. What if I could prophesy and understand all secrets and all knowledge? And what if I had faith that moved mountains? I would be nothing unless I loved others. What if I gave away all that I owned and let myself be burned alive? I would gain nothing unless I loved others. Love is kind and patient, never jealous, never boastful, nor proud, or rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. Love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Love is always supportive, always loyal and hopeful, and it is always trusting. Love never fails. Verse 13 says, For now there is faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. You know, I know that you hear these passages read at weddings, but I chose to include them today simply because of the person that you and I knew as Ellen Shaw. And in our memories, she will always be a loving person. You know, time and time again, as I was saying earlier, when Ellen would stop with Ralph at, uh, to see Carla, it was always interesting because my wife and I often were out on the porch sitting there, and every time Ralph pulled in, he'd roll the window down, and he'd say, hey, trouble, what are you doing? And so we would, of course, you know, um, either walk over, say hello, or, or something to that effect, or that sometimes they'd just, you know, pop over a little bit toward our direction and just stand there and talk. You know, we always enjoyed their company, and, and as I was telling someone earlier that, uh, you know, I've been trying to think of some of the stories that she would share, but I still think that in the obituary, one of the funniest things that I've ever seen in, in, in an obituary is, is the sipping of the beer. I think, and, you know, that's, that's pretty funny. Um, because, uh, you know, I guess when people would bring, you know, a, a beer nearby and she'd say, well, you know, let's say she must have been like a taste tester or something like that. I, I, I think that she probably really uh, got her uh, money's worth when she went to a winery or something like that. But, uh, you know, but it, I think what's even funnier is uh, I was told that when she would go to the doctor and they asked if she drank, and she, oh, no. no. <laughs> I could see Ellen doing that. There's no doubt in my mind. But you know, it, it is rather humorous because I, I would watch her and Ralph interact a lot of times as, as husband and wife, and and the fact that they were married for so many you know decades. And uh, my wife and I are celebrating next weekend uh, our 22nd anniversary, and I often say the fact that my wife hasn't killed me off by now is quite a miracle. But you have to have a sense of humor, and there is no doubt in my mind that they absolutely had that in their marriage. Um, and uh, so uh, I think Ralph would have been real proud of me because when my wife had knee replacement surgery, she had the knee replacement and I went and bought a truck. So I figured, you know, <laughs> but, uh, so I figured Ralph would really enjoy that one. And I think Ellen probably would have laughed as well, although she would have given me that, you know, because she did that a couple times when I'd say something. So how many of you have ever had that from her? <laughs> so, 
Um, but uh, but I, wa I want you to think about this in keeping with the theme of love. And that's what, that's what love is. Love is just accepting people. And as I said, you know, if, if it wasn't for Carla, we probably wouldn't have known them that well. Of course, I had, you know, some of their grandchildren in school and so forth and, and worked with some of their family members. Uh, but it's quite interesting because, you know, when you were, when you were around, uh, you know, Ellen and Ralph, uh, it, seriously, you felt like family. That's just how they were. And uh, what an, a, a, an amazing impact that made on us as a family. And, uh, and my daughter, would, uh, when, when Ralph had passed, she even one time she said, she said, you know, I haven't seen that guy that calls you guys trouble all the time, you know. And, and, uh, and now my daughter, you know, being almost 20 years old, uh, she understands why he called us trouble, I guess. So, But uh, there's one of my favorite poems that I've read at many funerals, and it's called The Dash by Linda Ellis. And uh, I want you to really think about this, not just about Ellen's life, but your, your own life. Um, it is never too late, never too late for you to leave such an amazing impact upon the lives of others around you. And as I said, just the brief time that I knew them both personally, that they most certainly did that for me. But this is called, entitled The Dash by Linda Ellis. It says, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth, and he spoke the following date with tears, but he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth, and now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard, or the things you'd like to change, for you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real, and always try to understand the way other people feel, and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more, and love the people in our lives like we've never loved them before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they'd say about how you spent your dash? There was never a time, even after Ralph had passed, there was never a time that Carla, I'm sorry, that Ellen would pull into Carla's driveway and she would not look over, and if, if, if we made eye contact, she would smile. Always smile. You know, I think that Ellen enjoyed life plain and simple, but there was definitely a humorous side, of course, as I said to you um, earlier, that she would always make you smile because her smile was contagious and it was sincere. I would like to read to you a poem that was written by a dear saint. Um, her name is um, Eloise Lott. She lived in Arizona. Uh, in fact, her grandson was uh, actually on uh, a book cover that I had, uh, and uh, she actually passed at the age of 91 at the time. And I found this poem um, in, in her book, and she autographed this book to me, and they, they sent it to me. I was really honored to get it. And, uh, but this was entitled Mothers, and it wasn't you know, just a couple months ago that, that we did celebrate Mother's Day. Um, and I think that... Uh, I would venture to guess, as you guys gathered uh, for Mother's Day, um, this would be her children, uh, this past Mother's Day, that it probably went through your mind that this could obviously be the very last Mother's Day that you spend with her. Uh, once again, love the people in your life like you've never loved them before, because we don't know how long they're going to be with us. This is entitled Mother's. Mother's Day, a day set aside, to honor mothers far and wide. For a mother's love is next to God's above. A true mother is there through thick and thin and will always be your friend. She'll love you regardless of what you do and strive to help you make it through. Her love and prayers are with you day and night that you will honor God and grow up right. She strives not only in words and deeds, but by her example, hopes to plant the seed. 
that will bring forth fruit for God and direct you safely through this world you trod. So honor her on this Mother's Day for guiding you in the Lord's way. And verse uh, from Exodus 20, 12 says, Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And as I said, that was from Eloise Lot. And I actually quoted her in uh, my novel. And um, she, she told me, she said, I'm, I'm your oldest fan, so, uh, and she had written down a quote, and I had to make sure that I put that in there. You see, uh, just as the poem describes, you know, I consider it a great act of love when a parent often puts his or her own personal desires aside in favor of what is best for her family. And as several of you told me just here today, she loved her family. And I would expect that she would also expect you to love one another life is too short. Yes, a loving mother is far more powerful than any army. A mother can investigate better than any FBI, and she cowers to no one. Ellen was a very strong person, we know that, and I'm sure she was full of savvy ways of making sure she maintained the upper hand when it came to child rearing, especially for the fact that she had several boys and a girl. Ralph, Mike, Paul, and Debbie knew her best as mother, and regardless of the grief that you experienced recently with the passing of Ellen, I know a flood of memories will replace the grief and will bring you laughter and joy. I found these quotes about motherhood that remind me of the kind of person I know Ellen to be. One is from Jane Summon, and it says, the phrase, working mother, is redundant. Another quote says, if you have a mom, there is nowhere you are likely to go where a prayer has not already been. And when you are a mother, you are never really alone in your thoughts. You see, a mother always has to think twice once for herself, and once for her child. You know, this is remarkable when you think about how it relates to so many things in her life, and I hope that I've said something today that has triggered a positive memory of her. And yes, even though you have to say goodbye to her this past week and today, you can still learn from her life. Great-grandchildren need to know everything they can know about Ellen. Grandchildren that grew up and knew her a little bit more, they'll need to pass those along to their relatives. You see, there will be times when those of you that knew Ellen the most will suddenly take a moment where you find yourself doing something and you stop and you say to yourself, I remember when she taught me how to do this. And she taught me years ago. You see, the more that we talk about those that we love, the more we'll be able to keep them alive in our hearts and in our minds. And I'm also convinced that Ellen would know and understand a quote like this that says, Our care should not be to have lived long, but to have lived enough. There's a quote in my home um, above one of the windows in our kitchen that says, life is not measured by the amount of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. And I'm sure many of you have heard that one before. You see, special people are never truly gone. They continue to live on through us. And the fact that God knew Ellen best is written here in Psalm 139. Just listen to these words, and this is also about you. It says, uh, Psalm 139, this is a messianic psalm that David wrote about Christ, and it says here, Lord, you have examined me, you know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even from a far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and my resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all my ways. 
There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord, that you don't already know completely. You surround me front and back. You put your hand on me. That, that kind of knowledge is too much for me. It is so high above me that I can't reach it. Where could I go to get away from your spirit? Where could I go to escape your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I went down to the grave, you would be there too. If I could fly on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest only on the far side of the ocean, even there your hand would guide me. Even there your strong hand would hold me tight. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelous, marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know them very well. My bones were hidden from you when I was being put together in the secret place. When I was being woven together in the deep parts of the earth, your eyes saw my embryo, and on your scroll every day was written that was being formed for me before any one of them yet had happened. God, your plans are incomprehensible to me. Their total number is countless. If I tried to count them, they would outnumber grains of sand. If I came to this very end, I'd still be with you. Not even death can separate us from God's love and his presence and his grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to know people like Ellen in our lives. Father, we also know the love that you have for us because you sent your son to die for us. You know what grief is because your son gave his life just so we can have eternal life with you. We thank you for the gift of salvation. I thank you that your mercy and your comfort would be with Ellen's family and friends throughout the coming days. Yes, there's no doubt in my mind that we will miss her, but she will never be forgotten. Once again, we thank you for sending people like Ellen into our lives because it gives us just a chance to see what it means to be loved and to share love with others. Father, I know that the cross is the greatest display of your love for us. And it brings tremendous peace to know that Ellen knew that gift of love for herself. Father, the one thing that I know beyond any shadow of a doubt that I will always remember when she pops into my mind is that smile. That contagious smile that she had. When Paul stopped at my house to inform me of her passing. And I immediately thought of her face. It had a smile on it. And Father, when Ellen closed her eyes here, and she opened her eyes there, there is no doubt in my mind that a huge smile spread across her face because she saw her Savior face to face. It is now in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen.